this is going to be our last lesson on mains electricity. Well, the last lesson that we are focused on the um, the kind of calculation side of things. Anyway, we've got a couple more little things to finish off, but this is this is the the end of the sequence of equation lessons that we've been doing. So. Um, it's not very long either. It's only uh, three or four slides that I'm going to work your way through and then going to give you some time to catch up on any questions that you've been missing. So uh, hopefully you remember that the term efficiency refers to um, how well a device or a process does what it is supposed to do. So if you invent yourself a hairdryer, its role is to dry hair. And it does that by moving warm air onto your hair. And so the job of a hairdryer is to warm air and to move air. What it is not supposed to do is make a big noise while it's doing it. So the hairdryer is partially successful. It does heat the air and it does move the air, but it's part partially unsuccessful. It also creates a noise which wasn't part of what it was designed to do. Another example, um, famously, bulbs are one of the most inefficient devices that we've ever manufactured. They are supposed to produce light, but in fact, they produce far more heat than they do light, which means that they aren't 100% efficient. They are uh, less than that. If we give them a lump of energy and say to a light bulb, I would like some light with this energy, please, the light bulb is supposed to turn 100% of that energy into light energy. It's supposed to emit 100% of the energy we, gave, we give it into the room as light energy. That's its job. That's what it was designed to do. The reality of it is that a light bulb might produce only 25% of the energy as light, and the other 75% might end up as heat. Now, you have met this concept in year nine, so hopefully it is ringing some bells. Um, but in order to calculate it, you really just need to grade uh, the device in a test. So say a student goes into a test and the test is out of 40 and they are hoping to score 40 out of 40. And if they did, they would get 100% on the passing a test test. That's, that's what the student has rocked up to do. They've turned up to pass the test and the teacher will feed back to them how well they answered the questions. And the teacher will say, well done, you scored 100%, which means that they got all 40 questions correct. But possibly more likely, this teacher is more likely to say to the student a number other than 100. They might say, you got 75%, and that would mean that the student got 30 correct, but 10 wrong. Um, so you are used to working out your own percentage in a test situation. What we just need you to do is be able to work out the percentage for how well a light bulb scored in the be a light bulb test, or how well did a hairdryer score in be a hairdryer test. So say that I give a light bulb 360 joules of energy. The light bulb has the opportunity to produce 360 joules of light. And its job is to do that. And if it successfully produces or emits 360 joules of light with the 360 joules of energy that I give it, then well done, the light bulb. It scored 360 out of 360 and gets 100% on the test. More likely, the light bulb will waste some of it as heat, though. So in actual fact, for you know uh, quite a few light bulbs, it might be the case that the light bulb um, only manages to turn 90 of the 360 joules we gave it into light. And the rest of it, the other 270 joules, it unfortunately wastes um, by emitting some heat into the environment instead. 
So we're not very interested in what it failed to do, all of that wasted energy. What we're interested in is how much of the 360 did it successfully turn into light? And so we just score it a percentage on the be a light bulb test. It scored 90 out of 360. Or another way of saying that is we take the useful energy, the energy that did what it was supposed to do, and we divide that by the total energy. So in this case, it's 90 divided by 360, which when you press the equals button on your calculator, it comes out as 0.25. And you remember from maths, hopefully, that to convert a decimal into a percentage, you just multiply by 100. So you can express your efficiencies as the decimal. You can write 0.25. That's a perfectly good efficiency. Well, it's a rubbish efficiency, actually, where it's a perfectly good way of writing the efficiency. Or you can write it as 25%. It's up to you. All I would ask you to do is, if you do multiply by 100 to turn the 0.25 into 25, you do remember to put the percentage sign on the end of it. Otherwise, it's not right. All efficiencies are 100 or less. And in actual fact, there are no 100% efficient machines or processes. Uh, everything wastes something somewhere. Even if you think to yourself, oh, well, what about a heater? A heater produces everything as heat. Therefore, surely the heater is 100% efficient. But even then, the job of the heater is to heat the room. And um, probably some of the heat leaks out of the room through the door and the walls and the floor and the and and. Um, the windows. And so even a heater that's designed to heat the room probably heats the outside a little bit as well. So it, it doesn't get to score 100% on its test. Okay, why do you want to know this? Well, no device in your house is 100% efficient. But if you're going to fill your house with devices, surely it would be good to find the devices that are at least as efficient as you can get, you might not be able to get 100%, but if you're buying light bulbs and you're gonna stick, I don't know how many light bulbs you got in your house, go around and count them, 20, 30? If you're gonna put 20 or 30 light bulbs in your house, well, what kind of light bulbs do you wanna buy from the shop? Do you wanna buy light bulbs that are 5% efficient and waste 95% of the energy that we give them? Or do you wanna buy 90% efficient light bulbs that only waste 10%? It's important. Uh, energy costs money. Why would you want to pay a load of money just to waste it on a 5% efficient light bulb? That's rubbish. But also, energy is costly to the environment. You know that we produce it using fossil fuels at the moment, and that every little bit that we do use fossil fuels contributes to climate change. And why use more fossil fuels than we need to? Because we've bought an inefficient light bulb or an inefficient fridge or an inefficient uh, oven. So it's important that householders, and boring as it may seem, or, or exciting maybe, one day, not too distant future, what, five years? You're going to be living somewhere um, that's not with your parents maybe. Maybe that is exciting. And you're going to be filling your own homes with stuff that you have bought and if you get the opportunity to do so, think about the efficiency of your devices. You want to, you might not be able to get 100% efficient devices, but you can strive to buy ones that are as efficient as possible. Devices don't usually have uh, the efficiency written on them as a percentage in the shop, um, but they've usually got a big sticker on the front with a letter A to E. And Basically, A means that it's really efficient, and E means it's really rubbish. So when you buy your devices, you want to look for the efficiency rating and go with as good as you can get. Um, and next time you're in a shop, even if it's just a supermarket, go find the light bulb aisle. Um, well, probably not a whole aisle, but go find the light bulbs in the supermarket next time you go. And just turn the box over, and on the back, it'll tell you what the efficiency rating of the, of the bulb is, whether it's A to E. Okay, so I want you to do some uh, questions um, that just test your ability to work out the efficiency of household devices. And when you have done that, that will allow you to um, finally understand, oh, there's a picture in the, 
in the, I didn't know that was there. There's a picture in the textbook of the efficiency ratings in letters. But, <coughs> um, when you've answered these questions, that will be the end of the calculation bit of the mains electricity in the home. We'll have covered everything that we need to talk about, about uh, from the electricity coming in through the plug sockets and the cables and all the safety features and the fuse and the earth wire. And so uh, the fact that it's dangerous, the fact that it's in your house. And then last lesson, we spoke about the energy transfers that it does, that it did, does for us. And now we'll finish off today with how efficient those energy transfers are and whether our devices are any good for us or not. And then when you finish these four questions, uh, it's not going to take you this hour because you've still got, what, 40 minutes left by the time I finish speaking. So um, it's not going to take you 40 minutes to do those four questions. So I've set you quite a few questions from this chapter five PDF. And you should have done all of the ones from 5.1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 now. So if you've got any spare time in the 40 minutes left from this lesson, could you please have a go at finishing off any questions that you haven't yet done? And then also on Friday this week, um, I'm in school again, supervising the students who are working in school. And so for our lesson on Friday, I won't be able to be with you. So I'm going to set you um, another hour on Friday's lesson to again finish off these questions from these five sections of this PDF. And then also on the next page of this PDF after this one, there are some exam style questions, which I'm going to set you for Friday as well. So your goal by the end of this week is to have finished all of the questions from this chapter five PDF and mark them and correct them. Um, and then I'm going to ask you to upload me another set of photos on Friday to show me that you've done that. So that's your goal for this week. Um, however, we have got another lesson uh, before that, and there's one last little bit that we need to do before then, uh, I think on Wednesday, but um, this is your goal for today. Get these four questions done on 5.5, and then go back to 5.1, 2, 3, and 4 if you need to, and get any of those finished as well. Remember, green pen mark and correct anything that you've done.